Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Friday Morning Ramblings, I'm going to talk about fertilizing. What do you do now that it's the beginning of June? And just show you some examples of what I would fertilize, when I would fertilize, etc. Talk about sprays, aspirin spray on the tomatoes. I get that question a lot, and that spray actually does work. Most of my garden's planted up, it's doing pretty good. These are all the potatoes doing well. I just got in a bunch of sweet potato slips and sweet potatoes I was growing, sweet potatoes people gave me. Set up a basic trellis now. I will put more trellising in there and that's just to keep all the growth up, you know, over the season. It is a little bit late. If you haven't started your sweet potatoes, they like a long period, like 120 days of growth. And you just let these grow through the heat of the summer, harvest them. Really, I harvest them when the first frost comes and that used to be October here, but you know, over the years now, it's getting closer to November, first hard frost. So here's the garden. People always ask me, why do I come in from this side? Because I usually shoot this in the morning and the shadow is going this way. So I don't want my shadow in here typically. So let's just start over here. So here's a cherry tomato plant getting to size flowering and I would give it, and it looks green, it looks pretty good. It doesn't really need a top dressing. I would give it a two second soak of a water soluble fertilizer. Now I'm using Agro Thrive, that's a 322 water soluble fertilizer. You can check that out in my video description. I'm also using fish emulsion, which I use Alaska Brown, that's a 511 NP and K, more nitrogen. In this case, I would go with the lower nitrogen and the higher uh, P and K, phosphorus and potassium with the Agro Thrive, just because I'm not really wanting a ton of leaf growth. The leaf growth looks good, but I want to give it that availability of phosphorus and potassium while it develops. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. Top dressing, that would be like coming in and just putting the granular fertilizer around here. And I will do that probably more towards July. When you put that granular down, remember that has to break down with soil biology and then it kind of gets to a form of N, P, and K that your plant can use. So if your plants are struggling and you're putting down the granular fertilizer, that will help weeks down the line. It's that water soluble that makes a difference. That's why you really need both. I think in your garden and right about now is when I'm using more of the water soluble fertilizers. Peas look great. They keep coming, which I'm happy. Temperatures have dropped now into the 80s. It's been cool. It's getting down to 50s tonight. So I think I'll get a full harvest out of those. Here's another tomato plant. I just pruned up the bottom. That would get a shot of the water soluble right now. And it's not so much. The question I get not so much is what do you give them? It's like I would pour on the water soluble, one, two, three, walk away. They're not getting a whole gallon or anything like that. It's just, you know, a little bit down around the base into the roots. So that's something to keep in mind. You're not like fixing up a gallon or two gallons in a watering can and giving it to the plant. You're just, you know, giving it a hit and, you know, giving them something to grow on. White flies are in here. I've just been spraying the, and they're looking like they're under control a little bit. I've been just hitting them with the hose and eating this faster than they can really take over and multiply. That makes a big difference. The kale in there is going crazy. We've talked about that before. Things look good. Kind of maybe we'll focus on the squash and the uh, zucchini and stuff like that. So these are my acorn squash. If you watched this last Friday, these were much smaller. So I told you these are going to double and triple in size. They were just hit with an insect dust. The video I, you know, that I just did yesterday shows you how to use insect dusts. Any insect dust, seven, chemical, Captain Jack's with spinosad or just spinosad, organic, will kill good and bad insects. So you have to use them wisely. At this point here, this guy looks pretty good. I might give him that three seconds of water soluble fertilizer just because I want it to continue to grow. But this is where I would consider now the first treatment of my antifungal. It can be whatever you want to use. There's not a whole lot of flowers, if any, on here. Put down the anti antifungal and that will stop your fungus or your fungi from coming in and taking hold. This might be where I might also spray on the undersides with a peppermint oil just to repel insects and keep the soft-bodied uh, insects. In my garden, it's spider mites away. 
But what I did do, again, was a little bit of insect dust on the leaves because cucumber beetles were taking over my garden. So I put them on late at night, the dust late at night, 8 o'clock or so. I rinsed it off. Um, I did it again yesterday and just rinsed it off this morning before we started walking around. A lot of people have been wondering what these are. I thought this was snail and slugs, but this could be those roly-poly bugs. If they crawl, I don't know. Snail or slugs. So this was treated with slug bait thrown around here, and that seemed to help. But at the same time, I put a little dust on there in case it was some sort of chewing insect that I didn't know. Looks like it's getting under control. The whole key for me for dusts is to rinse them off 6 a.m., 7 a.m. so that dust isn't floating around. I've been showing you these guys. The purple tops. I was worried about them. I mean they look awesome. Look at the size of the one down there and the one behind there. So I've been pulling out a couple. This whole area, no fertilizing. They're doing well. They're producing. You don't want to over fertilize with nitrogen because you're going to get more leaf growth. Sometimes it affects the growth of the bulb or whatever. Carrots look good. Everything in here looks really good, just leaving it alone. I don't typically spray any of this. If any bugs come in, maybe I'll spray, but there's leaf damage, that's okay. Here's one, so here's what you're looking for. So one of the turnips, let's pull this out, has started to sprout. You can also eat these, they're really good. Let's see if there's a turnip on here at all. Yeah, so there is a turnip. I'll eat that. Sometimes when they start to put out their flowers, they're a little bit, they get a little bit fibrous or woody. So seeing that, number one, just coming up, it's really time to pull these out and start eating them, which I will. This area is transitioning over. These are the beans that seeded themselves. I'm slowly reducing the number of beans to match the trellising that I want. And the beans will come up this way, spread over that way and that will provide some shade during the summer so in here I might plant some crops that like cooler temperatures a little bit less sun and that's because my sun ends up you know right over there and just hits this way these are shelling peas so I'm waiting for them to get nice and plump and then you just eat the peas inside the pods aren't really edible you can eat them but they're kind of tough this is a snow pea and it's getting really big those you can eat the pods the peas in here took off. And again, I'm glad for that cool weather coming. So the peppers in here are looking much more greener than last week. And last week I gave them some fish emulsion. I used the 511 with higher nitrogen versus the Agro Thrive because they were small and yellow and struggling. And I just wanted to give them more leaf growth potential. And nitrogen is what helps with leaf growth. Cucumbers starting to take off down here it's hard to see sometimes when the sun is so bright that's where the yellow damage was that's how I knew the cucumber beetles were here dust was on here before it's been rinsed off on this guy I broke oh, twice now great so I broke the tops off moving it around for the video they will put out more side shoots but that's disappointing I broke the top off of this vine and I just saw I broke that one too. They would probably be up to here within two days, but of course, yikes, you don't want to do that. The other guy's doing pretty good. The dust. So, yes, I have flowers everywhere. The bees should be coming out soon. Um, I have places for bugs to live. I have good insects in here. It would be great if more of the predatory or the predator insects came and killed off the cucumber beetles, but they didn't. So it's not really a question of, well, I need to bring in more beneficial insects. I have them. Just because nature works that way, doesn't mean you're not gonna get an infestation of cucumber beetles and it's your fault because you don't have good insects in here. Sometimes that happens. So those cucumber beetles could come in Nature doesn't care that I'm growing cucumbers. The cucumber beetles start doing their thing. They multiply, they get out of control, they kill my cucumber plants. The predator insects respond. They take care of the cucumber beetles. Nature's all nice and balanced. But in the meantime, my cucumbers are wiped out. So you want that balance and you want to hope that things don't get out of control because you're always trying to manage the damage down but just because you get an outbreak of insects doesn't mean you did something wrong, that you don't have enough 
you know, of the predator insects. Hope that makes sense. Onions doing great. Peppers in here. They are nice and dark green. They may look a little bit light because of the sun. They would not get really any fertilizer. They're just doing well. Let them go. They don't need anything. Tomatoes in here just got planted. So they were hit at planting about I don't know, a week ago. These plants here were actually just put in two days ago. I found them on sale at a, at a place close to me, so I dropped them in. Fish emulsion, water soluble. Remember, that water soluble is immediately available. I did scatter down some granular fertilizer because I wanted to break down, and you know, in two weeks, four weeks, it'll start breaking down. But really, in about a month, it'll start kind of giving back to the space and feeding the surface roots that come out here. Squash and zucchini. I'm liking how they look. Let's see if we can get a close-up of the color. Nice and green. They don't need to be fed right now. They're not struggling. They're starting to flower. I have green grass down. And the only reason I say green is because it's fresh cut. This will brown out in about seven days. When it browns out and kind of compacts, it's a great mulch, it's a good mulch now. And then I will put more grass on there. So about an inch at a time of the green grass. Just did a video on it too, if you didn't see that. And I will build up a great layer of mulch on here over the season. And grass clippings are great to return nitrogen back to the soil, feed worms, all that kind of stuff. And you can just mix it into the top of your soil at the end of the year. These guys are looking good. I can see some ants crawling around. Ants crawling around aren't necessarily a bad thing. They help pollinate too. Just depends on the type of ant you have. If those ants are eating the roots, I have ants that come in and will do that to my lettuces. But the bigger plants, they just tend to leave alone, so I don't really worry too much about it. Setting this up for future video with ProMix, but I got in my cantaloupe right there. That will trellis up this side. And that's watermelon over there. When they're both put in, handful of organic granular mixed through, watered in with that 511 fish emulsion. This is a good time to start spraying your leaves with an anti antifungal. Whatever one you want to use is fine. I know that the fungus start rolling in and I would just hit that now. There's no sign of any kind of fungus. If you saw any white on there, that's just um, insect dust that I rinsed off earlier. Hit it with the antifungal. It's not the antifungal you select. It's you sticking to a schedule. That schedule is going to vary 7 to 14 days depending on where you're at and, and what goes on in your area. So this will get hit with an antifungal. The vine borer will be coming soon. As this plant gets bigger, I will remove the flowers out of here and I will put dust right down on this part and that will help sometimes control squash bugs. The trick for squash bugs is to soak right here for about 30 seconds. The squash bugs that are hiding down there will crawl up and then you can just grab them and squash the squash bugs. It works really well. I've killed off about um, almost a dozen between these and the acorn squash and butternut that I showed you. And that's the other thing, that the squash bugs start showing up here um, really in later May. They're here obviously now, June 4th. But if you kill them early, they're not going to be laying the eggs. I took out, you know, almost a dozen. That greatly reduces the damage that they do and then interrupts the egg laying and stuff like that. So I will do that again in a couple of days. Soak the bottom if I'm not just doing a normal deep watering. And, you know, wait a couple of minutes, see what comes up, kill them. And then I'll come back in about 10 or 15 minutes and see what crawled up, kill those also. It's just a really good way to manage pests and disease. Had a mole or something in there, so I dug that up and just kind of killed out um, the space down there. I didn't see any animal. The tomatoes here were planted probably five weeks ago now, um, somewhere right at the end of April or beginning of May. This is the size that I would spray my aspirin spray on there. Now, I have a lot of videos on it. I'm not going to even put it in the description. Just search aspirin, aspirin spray if you want. It must be aspirin. Should be a 325 milligram tablet or whatever's close to that. I think it's 325. The salicylic acid, if I pronounce it right, is an aspirin. You could use willow bark if you're allergic to aspirin or you don't want to use aspirin. You could use willow bark. 
That salicylic acid, those two things, willow bark or aspirin, mimic a normal hormone that is inside the tomato plant. There's tons of wonderful scientific research. You can look up the SARS response, aspirin response in tomatoes, read about it. Anyway, it triggers the plant thinking that it's being attacked by fungus or by insects. It beefs up their defenses and they get kind of a little bit tougher leaf. They're ready to fight off diseases and it helps them really defend off potential disease. So I would mix that 325 milligrams in a gallon of water and just soak it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Put a little bit in the root system. You know, I do this probably every two to four weeks, you know, depending on what's kind of going on. And it really does make a difference. Yes, yes, to the answer to the question, it only really works for tomatoes. It doesn't work for other plants. There's some research in related plants it does, but the research is really for tomato plants. Got a few of my cherries in here sticking to my plan. One, two, three, one over there, and then one's popping up over there. Oh, let me show you something that's kind of cool. Let's see, let's walk so that I'm not putting my shadow in here. So in different places, I have tomatoes that are popping up. So this is one that popped up from last year. It was a little bit further in the bed, so I dug it up and moved it. It's a little bit beat up. But what will be interesting is to see a seed that grew itself, stayed here over winter, just got moved. Is it going to catch up? It will, of course. How quickly may be better. Will it catch up to this and start producing? So all that work that you do for starting indoors really does help get a jump, obviously. Look at the tomatoes in here. I mean, that's really nice. But you don't have to start everything indoors if you don't want to. If you have a shorter growing season, it's more important. If you want to save money, you can just plant tomato seeds out here May 1st, and they will kind of, you know, grow based on what the temperatures are. So, so they will just follow nature and do their thing, and you're going to get, you know, really nice tomato plants. My fish emulsion in there, this is what I do. I always tell you, I just buy the granular fertilizer. This is the slow release. Whatever's on sale throw it into a bucket make sure you keep a lid on it because i've done it this way i've left the lid off it rains as soon as this gets wet it decomposes it starts smelling terribly so you got to keep the granular dry i just leave it out here and i would just kind of eyeball things so the chadwicks look a little bit better because i just gave them some fish emulsion these plants are beat up that's a black cherry I would actually give them and will be giving them some more fish emulsion today. You don't have to wait seven days. Like I did this maybe three or four days ago. I'm going to give them that quick three second drink. Just get that nitrogen into the plant uh, root zone so that they're greening up and going. But not a ton. Like it's not a gallon. It's more, you know, really just a splash. Eggplant are starting to take hold. Here are those pepper plants, 25 mulched down. I'm starting to prune the bottoms. I will do that for all of them. Working on a video for this. Leaving the beans in there. I really like this section. Sunflowers almost quadrupled in size from last Friday. Have a bean vine that's growing through there and hopefully this will look really cool. You know getting to that 6, 8, 10, 12 feet of sunflower seeds. I am behind on taking care of my vertical tower. Strawberries are doing good. These I'm just not watering. You see that they're dying off, but they're just or past their prime. These will eventually get, you know, transition to something new. Strawberries are doing their thing. I talked about weeks ago, if not months ago, they're going to start dropping their runners. That's a great way for free money. This one will reach down to there. It'll be pushed into that pocket and I will multiply my strawberry plants without having to spend more money. I mean, look at this guy. That's just beautiful. That one's worth eating as soon as I'm done. So, and I've been just kind of eating like this out of the garden as I'm walking around. Peas, strawberries, lots of kale. Blackberries are doing well. There's gonna be, I'm sure, thousands of them um, even some of them are flowering now, which is nice. So I have some that are already, you know, having the green fruit. They will ripen first. I have some that are flowering now. They will come later. 
blueberries. They do like more acidic soil. So if your blueberries have been in your area for two or three years and they're not getting big and lush, they're gonna need some acidic fertilizer in here. You can put down sulfur to acidify it. You can use miracle Grow acid. Um, don't get stuck on the name. It's a good fertilizer for acidifying the soil or find another water soluble that has acidity. It makes a difference. And I give them a big drink just at the base of the acidic fertilizer really at the end of the year, at the beginning of the year. These don't really need much right now. But, you know, something's going right. Just all those blueberries. And I'll be keeping an eye now to see if birds figured this out and come and take them. If they do, I'm gonna have to really cover this space with bird netting, which I don't really like to do. It looks, it doesn't actually look ugly because um, it's black, it's hard to see, but sometimes birds get stuck in it. And I don't really feel like dealing with that. So I was talking about sprays. We're gonna walk back over to the cucumbers. I wanna talk about the peppermint oil spray. Strawberries look good. All the lettuces out of here. The bell peppers are starting to get to size. When they get a little bit bigger and I prune the bottom, I'll be putting some mulch down here. So, I mean, looking at these, the leaves are nice and green. They don't really need more nitrogen. I want them to really take off. I'm gonna use the Agro Thrive in here one more time. That's the 322, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. I wanna get more phosphorus and potassium in here. A little more nitrogen. This is new soil. That's something to keep in, uh, to consider too, is because this is a newer soil and a lot of stuff that I put in hasn't broken down, I just want to make sure I keep the nitrogen in there, especially if I'm watering on here and rinsing stuff away. So they're going to get a little bit of the agro thrive and it would just be, you know, start pouring. One, two, three, one, two, three, probably even faster than that. Let's do it over. Be more like, you know, <laughs> I can't count to it at the same time. Anyway, watch my hand. It'll be just pour, 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 just at that speed and moving the um, sprinkler, or the sprinkler, moving the, um, the container right over this and just sprinkling the fertilizer on there. Don't soak, soak it in. This should really be like one gallon at the most, just going through here real quickly. The reason I want to stress that, it's, it, the question I always get is how often do I fertilize? But nobody tells you how much to fertilize. For instance, when you take a, say, just a 555 and K granular fertilizer, that's the percentage in the bag. 5% nitrogen, 5% potassium, 5% um, phosphorus. If you scatter it crazily across, you don't put 5% down all over the place. Now you have it well below a 111, you know. If you scatter it as it says, it's still well below a 555. It's, it's not the numbers on the bag that are being represented around the plant it's just telling you what's in the bag. I know that's confusing. So if you're lightly scattering granular around, that's great, but your plant might need more if it's nitrogen starved because nitrogen is more fleeting and is used up more quickly. This is what's left of my plants. I'm trying to give them away slowly. I have people coming over today. I will give more away. Just trying to get rid of everything. This area needs to be weeded a little bit. Let's go back over to the cucumber plants. Now the cucumber plants get the cucumber beetles. Cucumber beetles also go to your squashes, your zucchinis. They will be all over the place. So, you know, dust if you want, do it responsibly. Wipe those cucumber beetles out before they just kind of go crazy. Now is when I would also start spraying peppermint oil spray. That's what I like to use under the leaves of my cucumber plants to control spider mites. I like using it on the sunflowers, all the sunflowers you see except for that group have really um, sowed themselves. Let me get this out of the way. I mean, look at those two sunflowers. They're starting to yellow at the bottom. Insects are dealing or eating the bottom of the leaves. So a little bit of dust on there. Peppermint oil spray. See, nope, that's not an insect. And that will help, you know, manage the sunflowers. The beans, like, right over back there, they get the uh, Mexican uh, bean beetle. They will start getting 
the peppermint oil spray. They also get spider mites in my area. So the beans, the cucumbers, and the sunflowers are what I mostly use my peppermint oil on. And you can do that every three days, every five days, every seven days. It's really um, mild when it comes to being used on your leaves. You can hear my dogs barking at joggers that are going by. So peppermint oil spray, realistically, you can do it every five to seven days if you really want to get spider mites under control or every seven to 10 days to really kind of manage and maintain it. It's that peppermint oil, um, you know, if those vapors get to our eyes, it does, you know, you do feel it. Imagine what it does, you know, getting on a small, tiny insect, you know, it really, really repels them. Those are kind of the basic sprays that I use, an antifungal of some type, peppermint oil spray. I will use neem oil for uh, chewing insects if they're on my kales and stuff like that. I will make a neem oil spray um, sometimes just once a month, very mild, and I will spray different plants just to prevent chewing insects from coming in, but I don't have a specific target for them. Um, I kind of just know what shows up. This high temperatures that came kind of messed up things with fungal diseases and stuff like that. However, you know, the temperatures are beginning to normalize and the garden looks pretty good. Again, I just want to stress that it's not so much what antifungal, antifungal, fungal that you use or what sort of insect spray or dust that you use. It's sticking to that routine that makes a difference. And you really want to use them early because, oh, I'm stuck in a tomato cage. Really want to use them early because that's what wipes them out and prevents them from getting established. That's true for diseases. That's true really for insects. And maybe you don't know, you're just getting started. So this is where you would just want to um, start keeping a journal, keeping track of when stuff shows up and just learning, you know, how to use the sprays in your garden. I think we'll just walk down here and kind of finish up. This will be a shorter one. More tomatoes to go in. I mean, between teaching and growing, I end up with more than I need. And again, I'm gonna give most of these away. So, just so you can see, the plants right here, they were in here. And I popped them out, put them in. They've already doubled in size almost compared to what's in there. The leaves are coming back. Once you get your plants into the ground, you hit them with that water-soluble fertilizer, they're gonna really start taking off. You know, these look good. There were, you can see the holes in here. I had an outbreak of flea beetles. Usually they go after my eggplant. Um, but they were getting the younger tomatoes. So these got dusted, no flowers on them, so I wasn't worried about pollinators. Rinsed it off in the morning. Flea beetles are under control. The tomato plants will be able to take care of themselves. And we can come all the way down here, because here's another example. So the tomato here, that one was grown inside, transplanted. That one was grown inside, transplanted. This one came up on its own, right there, so I left it, you know, really, really close in size. Well, thanks for watching. And if you're interested in donating to Freetown Farm, there's a donation link next to this video. All the free, or all the Friday morning ramblings will be uh, attached to Freetown Farm for donations. And we use that money to build the gardens um, for the community, for kids, for adults. And we're trying to renovate the farmhouse there into a teaching center and a community center and costs are going up because of everything that's going on in the world right now. So if you'd like to donate, you know, $5 really does make a difference because slowly but surely it chips away what we try to raise. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend in your garden. And if you have any questions, please leave me um, your questions in the comments and I will answer them as quickly as I can.